That's different. I really like that. Peshads or Pichads or Pichaw! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> howdy, howdy, howdy. I, uh, I, I wish you uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Uh, a couple days away. Uh, it's Thursday, it's time to get rocking and rolling, and we've got a lot to do today, so I'm going to kind of just kind of run through it real fast. Um, I do want to say that at the end of the show, we're going to revisit a couple of things that I recently tasted because I think I was really, really wrong. <laughs> but let's get into this one first. Um, I think I put my paper for this one down here. Uh, I don't know what I did with it. Oh well, I'll just talk about it <laughs> for a little bit of it that I know. This is Maker's Mark. This is the uh, wood finishing series. I had a paper written out on it, but I have discarded it evidently. This is last week's. <laughs> That's funny. All right. All right. So this is highly sought after. This is cask strength. This goes along with uh, some of the other things that they do. I might as well leave the cork off. Some of the other things that they do in the finishing series. So we did the the uh, private uh, uh, selection. We had that coffee crumble cake something, and I didn't care for it. I'm not a big Maker's fan. I wish I was. Uh, it's well-known weeded um, uh, bourbon. Um, a lot of people love Maker's Mark. I'm, I just never really got a taste for it. I love the Maker's 46. And that one I really, really like. They, they, they got that one right. Um, since then, the ones that I've tried, I haven't been in love with. We'll see if we're in love with this one. Um, we're going to run through the, the test, and then we're going to make a cocktail out of this. And then I'm going to try some things that I've had and reveal what's coming up. So let's go ahead and get right on into it since I don't have my paper. The wood finishing series is said to, to have wood from barrels used in the early days of Maker's Mark, if I understood it correctly. I may not have understood it correctly. But they have these staves, and I guess this is from like the first, second, and third incarnation of something that, um, that they did a while back. Um, oh, there it is. I made a little, a little mess. Uh, and it's supposed to run from the the top three floors. Hey, Quinn. The top three floors of the warehouse is where the wood staves are supposedly coming from that go into the barrel that this is aged at. So what they what they do with this flavoring series is they have the regular maker's mark, and then they they age it for a little bit longer with wood staves in in the cask with it, so. All right. It's got a very nice nose. It's very nice nose. It's got some cinnamon. It's the first thing I grab is cinnamon. Hmm. Hope I didn't forget one of my ingredients. I might have. Damn it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to send a text and ask for some help. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. If I could spell. Sin. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, uh, so they use these staves from the warehouse. All right, let's get back into it. So I'm getting some cinnamon. I'm getting um, a lot of the normal bourbon notes, right? There's rye. Uh, uh, only there's no rye in this. This is wheat, but I'm getting some rye notes, which is strange. Uh, I'm getting some vanilla, some raisin, a little pepper, really sedate on there. Um, 
maple syrup. I left it up there, didn't I? Yeah. What a ding dong. There wasn't just one on the counter? No. Okay, well, maybe it is down here somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll just keep that hidden right there. This is what I get for not having my glasses on throughout the entire broadcast. All right, let's go. Um, the proof on this, tried to get BRT 1 and 2 at the distillery back on the, think on the Saturday after Thanksgiving, but they had none. It's gone. All right, so I should be nice to this bottle is what you're telling me. Um, yeah, this is 109.4 uh, uh, proof, 54.7%. Uh, alcohol by volume. So, uh, so far I'm liking the nose. Let's see what happens on the palate. Nice bloom. Very nice, very gentle. Makes itself known. It's almost 100 what I say? 109.4 proof. Almost 110 proof. And that's where you start getting into that that hot zone, right? 120 or 110 and up. Uh, you know, you, I've had some that have been higher than that that have been pretty smooth. Um, anyway, this um, this bloom was very, very nice. It's got a, I won't say it's got a creamy mouth mouthfeel or oily, but um, it has a nice body to it. Um, great color. A little dark which I like. Um, now, flavor notes. I'll see if I can get you some. Actually, very nice on the palate. Um, Nice caramels, a little bit of honey. I got something floral in there. I don't, I can't identify it. Just something that gave me some floral notes. Um, as it goes off, I'm getting a toffee on the back end of it. Uh, I don't have any notes written down because I, I did something with that paper. It's gone. So, and I didn't, I didn't have any notes on it anyway. Uh, as far as the, 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 uh, well, the notes on the, on the tasting profile, uh, because I just, I generally try not to do that. I try to give it my own profile. Um, the longer it sits, the longer I actually rather like it. Um, I thought the first dram I took of it, as it, as it gave me the finish, it's got a long finish, and as it gave me that, I was thinking, uh, it tastes kind of musty. But now, on the second taste, I actually rather like this one. So if there's a makers that I like, I might do just what Paul suggested and take my time with it. Let's uh, give it one more here. That's nice. That's nice. I like this one. Um, really nice oakiness. I got a little apple that time. Uh, um, just, this is actually quite tasty. Um, so finally I found another Makers that I like, and will I ever get to see this bottle again? No. <laughs> but I do like this one. Um, I do like this one quite a bit, actually. Um, surprisingly enough, this is tasty. Uh, I like this a lot better than some of the other Makers I've had. Uh, that, that coffee cake crumble cookie thing, goo -ah. I didn't like that at all. Regular makers, I'm not a fan, but this I really do like. They found a stave here that I really enjoy. Uh, it's fantastic. Now, let me... Um, I don't know if I like it as well as Makers 46, but admittedly, it's been a while since I've had Makers 46. I've only got a little bit of a pour there, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. I'm not going to add the full milliliter. I'll give that a little spin. Um, while this is um, doing its thing, I went on a little bit of a hunt the other day, and I found one that I just, I'm, I bought it because it's not going to be made anymore. 
I found this one, the Ezra Brooks, this is the 90 proof. I found a few of these, so I bought them all that I found. Well, that's not true. There was, this was the last one in one liquor store. I bought two in another, and there were more on the shelf. But if you can find this one, grab it, because it's going to go bye-bye. Ezra Brooks has decided to discontinue the 90 proof bourbon in, uh, they're going to replace it with the Ezra 99. Ezra 99 is the exact same juice as this one. It's just 99 proof versus 90 proof. And it is a superior pour to this one. This one is a little thin, uh, but it's really nice uh, for beginning drinkers and things like that. This is great. This is a great daily drinker. And they're getting rid of it. The 99 proof may not be a great daily drinker just because of that extra APV. Uh, ABV. So um, if you find this one, buy it because it's going to go bye bye. It's gone. The Ezra Brooks 90 proof. I'm really happy to have gotten a few bottles of this. It was I was out of it in my collection, and then they announced that they were going to make it anymore. <laughs> so so picked I picked that up. Um, the other thing that I picked up, um, mainly for cleaning only, I managed to get some Everclear. Um, this is 190 proof, and you have to sign forms and give your ID and all sorts of stuff in the state of Ohio if you're going to buy this stuff. I have plans for this, which I will reveal later. Of course, it's all about cleaning. I will be using this to clean my surfaces of my stomach. <laughs> I have plans. I'm not going to drink it like it is. That would be foolhardy. I'm not going to do it. I'm not 21 anymore. So, um, but I wanted to show that to you because I'm excited to have it. I've been looking for it. There's some things I want to do with it, and I will keep you posted on that. I do have a whiskey down here that I'm kind of surprised that I found. It was very available. I've heard that it wasn't very available, so I'll be getting to that in a little bit too, as well as the two that I'm going to taste, and as well as the, um, the uh, cocktail. All right, so on a little bit of water. Mmm. Okay, even better. Made it a little bit more um, creamy on the mouthfeel. Brought out a lot more sweetness to it. A um, lot more honey, got a little molasses in there. And that's just with a couple drops of water. I didn't do much. Mmm. Caramel. A nice caramel, nice sweet caramel. Very nice. Makers, you did a good one. I like this one. I like this one. I know Kevin's got a Makers. Um, I forget which one he told me he had. Uh, I don't think I can get it there. We'll look, have to look here. Uh, Kevin, who is watching. Uh, no, not there. Uh, he has a... Makers from 2021, the FAE02. The FAE02. A different stave, but it's part of the wood finishing series. His is 109.1, so we're real close. So that's the one that he's drinking tonight. And of course, I'm drinking this one. Um, so, I mean, I would say that if you can find some of these in the wood finishing series, I think you're going to be happy. Uh, I have not been, I just, I didn't care for the private selection, the sweet. Cookie names, Blech. I didn't care for that. All right, so the last test that we have, of course, is on ice. So let's do that. A gorgeous ice sphere. <laughs> you guys are gonna hear that in your sleep one of these days. Gorgeous ice sphere. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm not going to go crazy because I, I like this pour. I kind of like this bottle to last. Uh, I know that's rare for me to say. It's really unusual for me to say that, but I want this bottle to last. I'm going to take my time with this one. Makers really knocked it out of the park with this one. All right. Still some nice nose. Of course, it hasn't diluted that much with an ice sphere, it's not going to. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that beautiful? Ugh. I first fell in love with an ice sphere at the Roxy Speakeasy in Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Went downstairs, 
found this place. Hey, Dan, how are you, man? Went downstairs, found this place. They served their drinks. I had something called a dark side. Oh my God, was it good. And, and they served it over an ice sphere. And it's like so elegant, right? So after that, I fell in love with it. And that's why I do ice spheres on everything. All those same notes, uh, just sweeter. Um, apples, something floral in there. That's very small. The floral element's just tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, I have a bottle of FAE 1 and 2 for my retirement cabinet in 12 years. Ha ha! I, I can tell you, if it's anything like what I'm drinking right now, you are going to be very happy that you saved those for retirement. But I will tell you this, Paul. The day you are retired, open those things. Because, and I don't want to be, it's Christmas season, I don't want to be morbid. <laughs> but how many people do we know that retired and then croaked? <laughs> like, pretty quick. It happens. Once you're retired, now you don't have any use for anything, whatever. The blah, blah, blah. You know, you're not working anymore. You croak. So, open those suckers on the day that you retire and enjoy them before you croak. <laughs> I know, Paul, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be morbid. I don't mean to be morose. Uh, but th these are the things that cross my mind. What's gonna happen to me when I retire when I'm 85 years old? <laughs> I'll be dead before I retire. And that's just fine. When I'm 85 and I'm talking to you, and I have to take my teeth out. <laughs> or I have to put them in and my dentures start clicking and clacking. <laughs> I, had a, I had an aunt, whenever she spoke, you could hear her dentures clicking and clacking. It was just the most annoying thing. Kind of like, only not good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really tasty. That oak just stays around even when it's cooled out. Um, Gosh, that's, that's nice. Um, that toffee, that, that, no, uh, not anymore, not on ice. It's, it's the molasses that's, that holds on the finish on ice. Just really nice. Disappointed in the FAE02. Should have went with 46 casks, but better on ice. Okay. I haven't tried that series, so it could be just the difference in the staves. If you're like me and you don't really care for regular Maker's Mark, you know, these stave experiments are going to be hit and miss. Some of them that I've had, I didn't like. Some of them that, that I've had, like tonight, I have liked. I think this is the first one since the 46 I really have liked. Now, Makers makes a great mixer. And since we're talking about that, <laughs> let's mix something. This is a real simple one. We've got more um, cocktails that are going to be coming in the next few days as we continue to celebrate the spirit of Christmas. Um, one of the fun things to do is to create Christmas styled cocktails, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I brought my stuff down. This is an easy bourbon apple cider cocktail. Um, I have my apple cider and I gotta put this in here. Uh, let's also though put some ice in there because I constantly forget to do that. This is one that you can serve over the holidays if you like. It's simple. If you've never mixed your bourbon with apple cider, you are missing out. That is such... I almost feel like not using this one and using the other makers. I just don't know where it is. <laughs> the other one, the, the one I don't like, I just don't know where it is. But I'll, I'll use this one because I said I was gonna. And I like this one. I'll just, I'll just be nice about it. All right, so this is going to require three ounces of the apple cider. I'm gonna make it two instead of three. And then this, I'm gonna make an ounce and a half. That's about three quarters. about an ounce and a half. All right. All right, so that we do that. <laughs> you saw me do that, you saw it. 
All right, then uh, I had fresh lemon. It's not fresh anymore. It, it, those lemons were sad. So I decided to have to go with this and then that's fine. But we only use a little bit of that. So maybe just that, not a whole lot. And then about, ugh, okay, I was prepared for that. <laughs> no problem. This is Fever Tree uh, Ginger Beer. And we're going to do about an ounce and a half of that. Uh, I think I'll wait on that though, because I'm smart. Alright, so we've got the lemon and the cider and the bourbon in here. Let's give this a shake. Got another ice. Oh, it, oh wait. It's over here. I need more table space. That's what I need. Get that in there. Another gorgeous ice. Yeah. And uh, pour that in there. And then you finish that with a little bit of ginger beer. And then you garnish it. I could have sworn I brought down my garnish. But it's not here. It's not in my pockets. A cinnamon stick. <laughs> These are really in there. <laughs> They're not budging. There we go. I got one. I got one. I got one. Come here. Now, I'm going to try this without the cinnamon stick because if it's just a garnish, it's not meant to do a whole lot. So I'm going to try this right now. Wow, I got flavor. That is so good. Now, but like a year and a half ago, I bought this bad boy and I've been wanting to try it. So I'm going to put a little cinnamon on top of this drink. And then I'm going to garnish with that cinnamon stick. Oh, that's fantastic. So let me go through it again. Uh, three ounces of apple cider, I did two. Uh, two ounces of bourbon, I did one and a, I did one and a half. Uh, half a teaspoon of lemon juice, just a few drops. Uh, two ounces of ginger beer or ginger ale. You can use ginger ale. Um, the recipes that I saw called for ginger bourbon, so I use that. And then uh, you can garnish with uh, an apple slice if you want to. I didn't feel like slicing up an apple for this. Uh, you can do a thyme sprig. Uh, and then you could do, of course, a cinnamon stick. I'm going to pull that out of there. Because <laughs> I don't think it's offering anything. And quite frankly, I want to save it. These, these are expensive. <laughs> okay, let's go back to it. Now, it's really delicious. Okay. So, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to revisit a couple of old friends. Um, the first one being last week's Old, old Elk, because I came back and I revisited the Old Elk, and I found that maybe my palate was compromised um, because I had had ribs for dinner last week. And now that I've had a mixed drink, uh, go with a new... Glen Cairn. I want to try it again. And this one is 110.6 proof. So if I end up slurring at the end of this, you'll know why. <laughs> All right. I want to give this a fair shake. I like old elk. I liked the weeded that I had uh, and when I tried this again, I liked it. it had, I, this one was not the one that I had pre-opened. This is one that I opened that night. It was a neck pour. I came back to it like two days later and was surprised at the fact that my palate was so far off. 
So let's give this a little bit of aeration. I don't recall necessarily what notes I got out of it. I want to say, if I remember correctly, that I got a lot of uh, rye out of this, like a very green rye uh, were the notes that were uh, present. I also remember um, thinking dirt when I tried it. Um, I don't believe that's the case anymore. I did some day drinking on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> and revisited this one, and uh, I found that I liked it a lot better than I did on the Burbcast. So I want to set the record straight on this one. Definitely not dirt. Very nice bloom. It says hello. That was the other thing, too. With this one, I thought it was unnecessarily hot. Now that I've come back to it after it set a couple of days, not nearly as hot on the palate. It tends to be a little bit more friendly. Um, it's still present, but it's not as hot as it was when I first tried it. It wasn't to the point that I couldn't enjoy it. All right. So with this one, I do still get some rye notes, but I'm getting black cherry, um, some dates. It's a darker flavor as far as fruit forwardness. <laughs> I don't know. I know I was, um, I'm getting some, um, some really nice oak notes from the barrel. Um, the sherry is coming through more now than it did uh, a week ago when I did this one. Um, really nice sweet wine notes that I did not get a week ago. So the, the anthem to this one is simple. When you crack this sucker open, you have got to let it sit. Pour yourself one and then let it sit. This is one um, that I wish I wouldn't have had ribs before I ate it. That was just a dumb thing to do. But I wanted to revisit this one because I thought it deserved a little more credit than I gave it. It does. The mouthfeel on this one is buttery. A lot more viscous than the Maker's Mark. A uh, lot thicker, oily, silky style mouthfeel. Uh, that comes from the sherry cask, I guarantee it. Uh, it's very nice pour. It's just, it, you know, it's, it's one that if you drink it, that's what you drink for the night. It's not one that you can flip around unless you do some mixed drinks and clear your palate, like I'm about to do, because I got another one I'm going to do. That's delicious. That's delicious. All right. One more Glen Karen. Oh, I got this too. I got Jim Murray's Whiskey Bible 2023. This just came today. So this will be some good reading. I look forward to going through this. I, I've been shown this Bible a few times, um, and I am really looking forward to reading what Jim Murray has to say about some of my favorite pours. Where do they stack up on his pours? You know, the old Ezra 90. He, it's got to be listed in here. What does he think of it? I can't wait to find out because I like this pour. When I first had this pour, I thought, you know, this is really thin. It's kind of watery. Flavor's good. And then the more I drank it over time, the more I started to think, yeah, okay, this is good. So I'm wondering what Jim has to say about this one. Um, so, okay, now, next. Another new Glencairn. Because we're going to go back two weeks now to the barrel seagrass. Last Saturday, when I decided to do a little extra drinking, <laughs> day drinking, I pulled out that old elk because I just, I felt bad about the notes that I gave it. I do like old elk. I thought I should have given it better notes. I should have not definitely uh, had any after eating ribs. The barrel, on the other hand, that was a, that was a night that I hadn't had anything super spicy and I didn't care for it. But I did come back to it. The barrel was the one that I had poured it out, poured it back in, then poured it back out, and poured it back in because I had heard that the barrel seagrass needed some time, needed some aeration. And I did this a couple of days 
before I tried it. The other thing that I did was the night after I tried this one, I left the cork aisled uh, that night. Well, that, the intention was to leave it out that night, but I left the cork out for about a week, about seven days. Just didn't even think about it. I came back downstairs and went, oh, I got to put that cork back on. It's going to evaporate and I won't have it anymore. But the transformation in that time by letting it aerate was significant. There were things about this pour that I found that I liked that I had no idea were there the first time I tried it because it was so stinking hot. Like stag hot. Like, how can anybody enjoy this? It's too hot. How can you flavor it? I ended up, what, dousing it with water and ice and everything else before I can get any flavors out of it because it was too hot. Guess what? It isn't anymore. Let's put this one down. Put this one up. This one is... 119.48 proof. It's a little higher than the other one, so yes, it's hot. All right. Real nice oak, vanilla. I am getting some rye notes like I did before. I might slur. <laughs> I'll cleanse my palate again. Mm. Can I repeat the ingredients for this one so you can make it? So good. Uh, two ounces of apple cider, an ounce and a half of bourbon, about a half a teaspoon of lemon juice, uh, about an ounce and a half of ginger beer or ginger ale. I use ginger beer. This is the fever tree. Very tasty. And then you can um, scrape a little apple or a little apple, a little uh, cinnamon in there and then use the cinnamon stick as a garnish, which I've decided oh, not to do. <laughs> all right. Kroger should have your cinnamon sticks. I looked all over for that stuff. All right, so this is the barrel seagrass. Mm. That has got flavor coming out of every direction. I remember when I tried it two weeks ago, I didn't like it. I had trouble finding the flavor because the proof was just too high, it was too hot. But now, uh, after letting it sit, the cork was off of it for a week. Uh, the flavors on this are fantastic. Um, definitely some really nice floral notes. I'm getting a green tea, which I, I noted that night after I put it on ice but now I'm getting it neat. That green tea uh, flavor is just gorgeous. A uh, little honey. Um, so the research, and I said this last week when I was doing Old Elk, the research on this told me that there are two different types of bottles that you can get with this. And that one would be super hot and the other is super flavorful. I don't pretend to understand the differences. It could just be the person who's drinking it. But the first night I tried this two weeks ago, it was just, it was the hot side. Tonight when I try it, it isn't. It is the flavorful side, and it is quite delicious. Um, give it another, another uh, round here. Yeah, the green tea notes still shout out. There's a really nice honey note. Um, there is some still, the rye notes are still there. Really just a very nice, very flavorful thing. But you know, now you know that if you have this one, you have to let it sit. You have to open it, you have to pour it, then you have to let it sit, leave the cork off, whatever it takes 
to cool this monster down, but once you get it cooled down, boy, is it flavorful. I still think it would be great in some of your favorite drinks, uh, especially because uh, considering those rye notes, those rye notes just really pop, which tell me that it'd be great in your different drinks. But um, but I, I feel like I needed to be fair to these drinks, and that's what we're coming back to tonight. So, okay, what's coming up? Uh, so this is the 22nd. We are three days away from Christmas. I think I'm going to come back on Christmas Eve and do some Christmas cocktails for you, maybe three or four. Uh, I have amassed <laughs> mass quantities of ingredients, so I can pick and choose what I want to do. Um, I, I went through a list. I, I scoured the internet. <laughs> and I found, oh, I don't want to do that one. I don't, uh, and then I went to the store and I found the ingredients. Oh, maybe I will do that one. So uh, we'll get into that Christmas Eve. And then, uh, let's see, the uh, Christmas, we're going to leave you alone. You're going to be busy. You're not going to want to pay attention to me. Um, we'll come back next Thursday after that, which is the... Come on. Next Thursday is the 29th. We'll come back then and we'll do this one. Whiskey War. I have seen nothing but good about Whiskey War. Uh, this is barrel proof. This is done by High Bank, which is a Columbus, Ohio company. It's one of two Columbus, Ohio companies. And um, I have, people have been shouting about Whiskey War. They've been doing a lot of, a lot of posts and blogging about Whiskey War, uh, Ohioans mainly. Uh, but we're going to come back and um, give this one a try next Thursday at 7 o'clock right here. Uh, so Christmas cocktails on Christmas Eve. And then we'll be back a week from today with Whiskey War from... Uh, these folks. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. Ever. High bank. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you a lot uh, for hanging out. Uh, I'm. Uh, looks like I missed a few. How do you store your clear ice spheres? I put them in a Ziploc, but they get covered in snow frost. You have a better way. I do the same thing, Kevin. Uh, I I put mine in Ziploc bags. You could probably vacuum seal them if you wanted to. But, I mean, look at this. It's gorgeous. Well, <laughs> look at this one. It's gorgeous. You, you, I mean, as soon as you dip it in the drink, all that frost and ice and stuff just disappears. So, don't worry about it. Really, I mean, that's what's, what it boils down to is once you've made it and once you've stored it, there are some storage options. I mean, if you wanted to do something silly and vacuum seal it, okay. No, <laughs> I'm not going to do that because you don't need to. Um, I mean, it turned out beautiful right here in this glass. Um, this glass is beautiful, too, for its own reasons. Mm. God, that's good. Golly, that's good. Good night, that's good. Okay. Then uh, moving back, uh, Landon's watching. Hey, Landon, how are you? Brandon's with us, too. Hey, guys. We start at 7 o'clock. We're almost done. I just wanted to tell you that we start at seven o'clock now. We changed the time. I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to be 62 going early. Good for you, Paul. Good night. Yeah, I'll be 82 before I can retire. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ice sphere for the win. Thank you. A bottle of FAE. We went to that one. Great. FAE 2 is so much better with water. Good. You don't like the 99, Kevin, as much as the 90? I like it better. The mouth feels better. The, the flavor's better. And we're talking about the old Ezra, or the Ezra Brooks. Um, the, the 90 is being discontinued. I like the 90. I like the 99 better, but I like the price point of the 90 better. It's just watery to me, and, uh, but you get used to it, and I've, I've turned it into a daily. I did, before they discontinued it. Um, so the, the 99... The flavors are still there. The, the mouthfeel is still there. I like the 99, but I'm a little bit nostalgic and sad about the 90 that it's going away. So, but I do like it. Uh, sipping on some 46 now. Good, Paul. Good for you. 
Uh, let's see. On my way. <laughs> Love the shirt. Thank you very much. This is, this is one of two Christmas shirts I got. The other one I'll wear on Christmas Eve when we do some cocktails. Uh, let's see here. Um, 62. Good for you, Kevin. Or, uh, Paul. Golly, that's going to be fantastic for you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, got a point there. Uh... Storing the ice spheres. Revisit the melicorn. <laughs> so Kevin hated the melicorn. He hated melicorn a lot. To the point that he gave me the rest of his bottle of melicorn because he couldn't drink it. I like melicorn. I don't love it, but I like it. It was fine. It was good enough, you know, for what it's for. And, he, and Kevin hated it. So you want to revisit that one, Kevin? Okay. Sometime soon, they will. I, I will. Uh, I will revisit Melicorn. They do sell it locally now, which is amazing. <laughs> so I can buy it at the local Kroger. But um, yeah, I, I I will go back to that one just for you. But I think you should join me. I think you should come here, and I think you should enjoy a fresh pour of that which you have cast aside like this. You should come here and try it with me if we're going to do that. And I think your mind will be blown. Or not. <laughs> Michael, hey, Feliz Navidad to you. Deal. All right, good, good, good. Uh, let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. I'm not. I'm not missing anything else. So, good. Kevin, it's been a while since we've had you here. It'll be fun to have you back. Um, and we are going to be growing this in 2023. I keep saying that, I know. But those of you watching right now, if you want to come and do a Burbcast live with me and try the different things that I try, PM me, private message me, let me know that you want to come. And in 2023, I'm going to be developing a calendar. And I will try to let you know what that calendar is going to be. Sometimes I don't even freaking know. Uh, but in 2023, if I can tell you what the calendar is, you can tell me what you want to come and try. So if, if uh, Whiskey War is what you want to try a week from today, then let me know. You can come down and try it with me. It'll be fun. Uh, ladies, men, both of you are totally invited. Come down, be a part of this. I don't want to exclude anybody. So come down and be a part of this and drink with me. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we are 43 minutes in, which means I'm 13 minutes over. So I'm going to go. I'm going to finish this bad boy because this is fantastic. Mm -mm -mm. More Christmas cocktails in a couple of days. 7 o'clock, Christmas Eve. If you're not doing anything else, on Christmas Eve, <laughs> you can always watch it after the fact. You know, when everybody else is sleeping on Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, and you're up because you're dying to know what my Christmas cocktails are, you can uh, check it out then. All right, guys, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to you. I'm so happy you're with me tonight. Uh, I look forward to the Christmas cocktails on Christmas Eve. And, uh, you know, the weather forecast is icky for basically the whole state. Um, the governor has come out and issued all sorts of safety guidelines and blah, blah, blah. So if you don't have to travel after like nine or 10 o'clock tonight, don't, um, if you do travel, don't use cruise control. Uh, you get to those bridges that freeze faster than the regular roads and those bridges will knock you on your butt. They, cause cruise control is going to continue to go and when it loses traction, it keeps going at least on my car, which is a 2005 model. <laughs> Maybe the new cars have new things, but I'm just telling you, cruise control this time of year when you're going to get a, a big winter blast is a bad idea. So don't use cruise, cruise control. Most of the year, I would say, use your cruise control, people. Come on! <laughs> anyway, uh, so be careful over the next few days. Uh, the other thing about the weather is that by New Year's Eve, it's going to be like in the 50s again. So I see this as weather that's going to get you sick really quick. So just be prepared. Know that the weather's going to change a lot. It's going to go up and down and be icky. 
and uh, just stay inside, stay home, enjoy the fresh baked goodness of, of the holidays, and share, share the fresh baked goodness of the holidays. My grandmother died in 1999 and I haven't had a Christmas cookie since. Christmas cookies for me. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again for watching. Uh, I knew I'd be slurring by the end of this and I probably am. So thank you again. And uh, we will see you on Christmas Eve with some cocktails. And uh, take care and Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.